Sehr geehrte Herren. Gentlemen, dear gentlemen, um, you see, Berlin is a gender city, so I'm quite happy. At this time, I don't have to welcome 60 different genders, but really just the men. Very good. And Christian Eigner, uh, and John Eigner at the very back of the hall, thank you very much for the invitation. And thank you for inviting only men, because then I don't have to, congrat uh, to, to welcome lots of different genders. As I said, it's really just for the men. In a way, this is like a protected zone. It's for men only. And that is important. Because we have to stop apologizing for the fact that we need this protected area, that we want to be amongst us without any women. Women don't have any problems with that. It's just men who have that problem. We need this kind of space for us as men, and that's why this is such a great event with all the speakers, all the actions, and all the things that happen here that I like so much. Normally, I don't really go to conferences, but I have seminars, write books, and I'm there for my children. But today I came here, first of all, because John definitely wanted me to be here, but also because the topic is so important. Can we have the first slide? Do we have the remote control here for, for the slides? Pass on to the future, i.e. to our children. Which of you is a father? OK, lots of fathers in the audience today. Great, very well. And who would like to become a father? Now, I suppose. That's almost 100%. Either you are already a father or you would like to become a father. So that seems to be a very important topic to you, for all of us. Um, because it's a question related to our future. What do we pass on to the future? Um, what do we want to do? We want to create something. Agredi means to, uh, to shape. I want to shape the world. I want to make the world a better place. Maybe with the company that I found, with a nonprofit organization, with spiritual work I do, um, by creating peace, by inventing something, or the traditional way, by giving life to children, by being a father of my children, by passing on something that comes from me personally, and um, my values, the things that are important to me, by passing these things on to my children. And that's a very traditional, classic example um, of a contribution that someone can have to his future. Bevaterung. Literally, this means um, fathering, fathering someone, acting as a father for someone. You see, I'm not really proud of that word. Um, yet, but you see, in 2006, um, I wanted to write a word document, and the word mothering Bemutterung was accepted there, but not the word fathering. And word still does not accept that. It's always underlined in red and claims uh, and word claims the word does not exist. We need the word also in the German encyclopedia, the Duden. We keep talking about Bemutterung, mothering, but not about Bevaterung, fathering. And that's why I would like to talk about that now in my presentation. Friedrich Eckart Leimbach. Uh, he's the gentleman um, whom we owe my presentation here today. Without him, I wouldn't be here today. He was born in 1939, and I hope you can hear me now. Um, he died um, a year ago, the day after tomorrow, and I'm very proud of him. I really received so much from him and quite a lot of things that I will then pass on to my children in a totally different way. I got from him. I really experienced this fathering from his side. And I have a story, a background that many people will have. Lots of problems with my father's, lots of therapies. You see, I think um, my first self-experience seminar, well, I attended when I was only 16 years old. I was the youngest one in the seminar. I was always the youngest one in all the seminars and therapies because of my father, who was not at home, who was hardly at home, who slapped me, who was not empathic, who was cholerical. And I kept going to therapy sessions, and it just didn't get any better because I didn't understand his message, because I didn't I wasn't able to take and accept his way of fathering me. You can work with and about your father for decades. You can try to sort things out. You can work at it, but you will always find something that's not OK, something he did wrong, a wound that never healed, a moment then when he wasn't there, a situation where he didn't behave the way he should have. But that's not the way to go into the future. This won't lead you anywhere. I would like to show you a different way to understand this process of fathering and to act as a father for your own children. 
you see, we have these T-shirts here. And what it says here on my T-shirt is, my father, my held, my father, my hero. And of course, that is provocative. But I say the father is the most important human being in every man's life. We can only say dad to one single person. And it's the most important relationship, I would argue, that we have in our whole lives. Now, you would say, no, my most important relationship is with my wife. She's my soulmate. That's the greatest relationship I've ever had. Or you may say, no, my most important relationship is with my mentor or with my best friend. Now, all of these relationships are very important. But of course, there are lots of different forms of relationships. There's not just the one um, partner, not the one life, not the one partner, not the one mentor, but there's only the one father. And that's what I'm talking about. Why is this person the most important in your whole life? And why will you be the most important person in your children's lives if you really take on this role? Let me have a look at this. Yes, you are like your father. Now, this sounds provocative, and I'm going to um, explain this a bit in a minute. You see, there are many men who come to my seminars, to my office. They have lots of problems. They're listed here. Low self-esteem, self-doubts, uh, lack in a masculine character and identity, depression, lack of motivation, no vision in life, no um, vocation, no sense or purpose in life. You know, all these crises that lead you to start work, to take action, to go to a therapy, a coach, a counselor, to ask for advice and support and help. And if somebody comes to my office or my seminar, then the first question is, how is your father? And then that man would say, well, I didn't come here to talk about my father. I have problems with my libido or with my children. And then I say, no, the problem is your father. How is your father? Because the absence of the father in my experience, or a lack of fathering, a lack of, that lack of attention from the father, leads to massive problems when the boy becomes a man. This doesn't mean that you're not a man. It doesn't mean that you're a loser. It doesn't mean that you're not likable. It doesn't mean that you lose control of your life and can't have good sex and a lot of fun in life. But there is one aspect of your personality that has not been developed, one aspect that can only come about, that can only be developed, on the basis of fathering, if somebody is a father to you. So fathering, the things that come from the father, that's what turns a boy into a man. We have more and more cases in our world of mothering. It's one-sided, but it's what the German encyclopedia says, mothering, bemutterung. There are so many men who grew up only with attention from their mother, but not from their father. So they only receive mothering, but not fathering. And they are large, they're big boys in the end when they are grown up. There are certain masculine characteristics that they have never been able to develop because of all the mothering and the lack of fathering. The father stands for a role model, an orientation, an authority. There are frictions with the father as well. And of course, the father will also define certain limits. The mother has something else to give to her children. The mother gives other things to her children, and I will come back to that in a few minutes, the role of the mother. But my father has always been important to me, because without my father, I would never have been able to do the things that I currently do. He worked in a totally different field. He was um, a CA CEO, a manager. But in his life, he made quite a lot of very courageous decisions. And what you need from your father is the right kind of support. And quite frankly, I often didn't quite understand the message I got from my father. And I'm sorry to say, many of my therapists didn't understand the message that I received from my father either. You see, I was always the tallest boy at school. And I was always beat up by other boys, because the other boys always wanted to beat up the tallest boy. So I always went home with a nosebleed. And my mother, she um, comforted me. Then my father came, and she punched, and, and he punched me on the nose again to show me how to fight. And then I went to my mother and said, Mom, Mom, Papa, beat me. And my mother said to my father, Eckhart, leave the boy alone. But I didn't understand his message. I didn't understand why he did that. My father was aggressive. He was violent. That's what the therapist said. That's what I believe. But no, suppose your son comes home and somebody at school beat him up. And he comes home the next day and again somebody beat him up. So what do you want? You want that not to happen. You don't want it to be that way. As a father, you don't want the son to suffer, to feel the pain that you may have felt when you were a boy. You want him to assert himself. And what does the mother say? Well, the female strategy is to go to the teacher and to say, you're not allowed to beat up poor Bjorn. 
And of course, um, that doesn't really lead to any very convincing re results. So what my father wanted to show me was, well, if somebody hits you on the nose, hit him back, otherwise he won't respect you. And I really took quite a while before I understood this message. So fathering, the way the father treats you, is different from mothering. And if the father is not a psychologist, I mean, of course, psychologically, from a psychological point of view, um, he should have done that differently. But anyway, that was his message. And now I like martial arts. I like extreme experiences, borderline experiences. Um, that's also something I offer in my seminars, borderline experience initiation. Quite a lot of things I learned from him. There was a, a public swimming pool in, in, in Spain, you know. Um, I climbed up that little tower, 10 meters high, and then I wanted to jump into the water but I didn't dare to do that. And I said, oh, I have to jump into the water now. And my father shouted up, I'll give you 20 Deutsche Marks, which used to be a lot of money back then. So one, two, and still I didn't dare to jump into the water. And then my father said, we're going to take a mo motorboat. You're allowed to control the motorboat, to steer the motorboat. And then he said, I'm going to punish you. So he threatened me, but I just didn't dare to jump down into the water, these 10 meters, you know, didn't dare this 10 meter dip. So I was standing there, I was like 14 years old, and I didn't, dare to jump into the water. And then my father said, fuck it, you jump down now. And that's what I did. And then he said, well done, boy, but you have to jump two more times. And that's how it's done. I'm grateful to him for that. And no, I was not in that situation. It took some time. There are so many stories why I learned it, that fathering is not the wrong thing to do. He did so for love. Who is a father who does not love his children? Hi, over there. who does not love his children? I do so. There is one, okay. I have to been asking this question for 20 years. Well, the odd man out must be in every community. Every man, every father loves his children. But the message, we don't quite get it across um, more often than not. Uh, you ask this question, very nice questions on uh, things like uh, wo being wounded uh, by your father. You don't believe that your children have not been wounded. But you never can do everything right uh, apart from being illuminated. Do you really want an illuminated father? No, it's no fun. No. So the understanding the message, quite often we do not succeed in understanding his message. He has so many things to do, and unfortunately, so many things that he cannot give. Well, we must move away from this circular uh, inspection. It's uh, only in part about your own father, but what can I give in terms of fathering to the world? You need to ask yourself uh, if you are in contact with your father, and of course also with your mother. What can you pass on? What will your children feel? Because children notice uh, precisely how do you behave towards your father? How do you talk to your father? Are you happy when he arrives? Or are you rather um, cross and angry at him? Is your heart still closed to your father? Is he, are you full of awe and love? Your children will notice. You cannot fake this. They will notice. When I can, if I can say anything from my psychological work, I can tell you one thing. The children watch you carefully how you behave towards your father. And, in the future, they will treat you the same. I have done so many family positioning exercises, and it's bound to be reiterated. You can expect the same behavior from your children that you showed to them uh, for uh, re regarding your own father. The crucial thing is the father is there, that he's really a point of reference. In society, we see more and more that the mother is the primary caregiver or the only caregiver. The mother is there, puts him to bed, is always there. In the, when she is a reliable 
people tie, an emotional tie. By the way, it's also the basis for developing also lasting bonds, a secure primary tie. And most fathers are, are a secondary caregiver. What can that be scientifically? That's the uncle, the visitor, a friend, secondary caregivers or secondary points of reference, a person of reference, even in psychology, there are dozens and dozens of studies how important the prim primary caregiver is. In brackets, the mother. Hardly anything about the importance of the father because he is always seen as something replaceable as the nanny. So for example, also the uh, neighbors or the teachers. No, I state or I claim that it is important that the father be a primary point of reference as important as the mother. That's the whole purpose of this talk. We need to be on an equal footing with the mothers. Children need on an equal footing both mothering and fathering. And the two of them are not equal. They are very distinct from each other. We have more and more families uh, that are uh, held together by the mother alone. This means an emotional excessive weight of the mother, an overdominance of uh, the motherly element. When, uh, whenever fathers commit sexual abuse, it is punished immediately, but not so about mothers. We don't even have the awareness. It's a development that I observe more and more often. Uh, Children that grew up in an uh, exclusive uh, role, uh, tie, a personal tie with their mothers, they become almost an, a replacement for their partners, an emotional partner. And that is an emotional abuse uh, with, uh, uh, so fathers, with fathers, it's different. They are criticized so often, especially when it comes about the suspicion of uh, uh, sexual abuse, intimacies, and um, groping around it. Andreas told, uh, so alre told us already, uh, the lack of fathering in our regions has a story. It starts about 100 years ago. World War I, World War II, five million fathers died. I don't know exa the exact number. It's a gigantic sum. Half of the children grew up without fathers, and a, a, a large part of those who had a father coming home from prison camps, these fathers had quite often gone through atrocities. Uh, uh, Things that we cannot even imagine, we are softies. Quite often they came back as uh, psychologically crippled. Uh, they had a heart of stone, otherwise they would have died. And they came back into the families. They could not enact the role of a true father. We had two generations of fathers that uh, most of the times, uh, due to their death, could not be there. But that's not all. Due to the low esteem of father's emancipation, the message was clear. Uh, women are autonomous. Uh, you need to strengthen the mother. Fathers are superfluous. It's a defathering, not by death, but by separation. And by separation from the father through divorce, also by, de by sentences uh, from the court which destroyed so many relationships. Since the 70s, attempts are being made to create an, under which father and mother are equally um, valuable as uh, the lone mother. And it is clearly stated that it is uh, as good as father and mother. And I would say very much to the contrary that uh, uh, Sons need their fathers. Uh, by the way, also daughters. Uh, it's not a good model to have uh, this favoring of uh, the lone or single mother. It's not a good model, and it will go on. 
Yes, of course, there are situations where you separate, and uh, then you have a separation. You tried all you could, and but it's not possible. But it's different whether I take it uh, as uh, uh, gr granted. Uh, I, I get the semen insemination from a, uh, from a sperm bank, and I know it for up front that this boy will grow uh, grow up without a father. I think this is a crime. It's criminal. It should be banned. The result is that uh, the Federal Authority of Statistics, it has become even more gross ever since I wrote the first 1.6 million children growing with just one parent. Uh, guess with who? 90% of uh, these children live only with uh, the mother and uh, a one-digit percentage uh, in the children's homes and uh, uh, mm. 1.4 million children grow up in Germany without fathers. Uh, it is uh, propagated as an equally important model. Now, I would say it's a failed family model. Yes, of course, failure may happen and uh, there might be incidents, but it's nothing that you should thrive at. Why the father is so essentially important, that's my point here. It must be that fathers and mothers be together and be a be primary caregivers. The central message here is uh, we live in a matriarch. It may uh, sound strange. We have a patriarch, an assistant in Switzerland. One day, what was it? Mark Andrin. One day where there is a one day of women's um, equality. They complain. They state that they live in a patriarchy. No. Why? In education, we have a dominating role over him. I'm also, uh, I, I work also in a partnership with a sexual therapist. Eighty percent of are led by uh, the women. And I would say 95 percent of the relationships, the leadership is played out by the women. And uh, we have also a chauvin female chauvinism. Mothers do not tolerate any interference. Uh, fathers are quite often accused. I have uh, three small children at Christmas, the youngest one being eight months old, uh, two years and three and a half years old. The whole series of stories, uh, women tell me, unknown women tell me, well, yeah, this young man uh, or the, the small boy needs a helmet uh, whenever he runs around at seven kilometers per hour. And then, uh, and my boy is crying out, are you, are, the, are you the mother of this boy when she offers me a helpful hand? Just imagine what a portion of arrogance a totally unknown mm, woman believes she can comfort the baby or the, the child better than I, the father. I can tell you so many stories. Fathers are denied the competence to raise children up front. Women are used to become uh, the dominating force. So men are quite often so uncertain. They do not know how to raise a child. So. Uh, they are more than willing to leave uh, the leadership in education to women. That's the purpose of my talk, to strengthen you. Get your own position in rearing a child, the father's role. So we have a completely feminine education and socialization. That's the reason for this problem. Not only the absent father alone. No, uh, we have a divorce system where the fathers are hopeless. If I was a lawyer and would defend only fathers, I would be bankrupt. Normally, they are not paid by the outcome, but you have hardly any chance in divorce uh, processes or uh, action in a 
you, uh, the the mother must be a monster so that you become the the. We have a, we have a more and more exp uh, expensive early ed childhood education system. I would say shut down all those nursery schools. Uh, Unless you have 50% of uh, male educators, these 2% uh, uh, of educators, uh, they must not do anything. They are not allowed to change the nappy. If you go, a uh, man, the children are l l sticking to you, uh, you do, you kick the football, they uh, will be talking about it. It's such a hunger for fathers. 98% of primary nursery uh, school educators are women. The poor rest of ad grady, of aggression, of I want to take a risk, I want to have an adventure, I want to wrangle, I want to fight. All this is beaten out of the children. If those who stay aggressive, uh, they become diagnosed with ADHS, attention deficit uh, syndrome. We have a complete feminization in the nursery schools and in the primary schools. It uh, goes on like that. Only 10% of the teachers are male. Again, we have a completely effeminate environment. I could tell you so many anecdotes which make you sad. Uh, the boys are kicking each other, and then they are discriminated against just because they fight with each other. Or I, I, our housemate told us uh, uh, the boys performed kickboxing, a show battle at the age of 8 and 10. They were summoned to the headmaster, and uh, they had to write uh, uh, an essay. And then the mother was also called into the office of the headmaster. So this is a driving out of the male role. Or men tell me up to the 10th year of age, they had no real male role model without any fathering in an exclusively feminine, female or feminine environment receiving the primary social association. Then the big surprise is that they do not have any male side. They, they are afraid of addressing a woman. You don't have this, of course. You will know many such cases. But in practice, yes. All these problems have got to do with this female dominance in early education. It's about this massive uh, disadvantage, discrimination against fathers, uh, for example, boys getting lower grades uh, with the same performance. Uh, girls, uh, whenever they uh, uh, beat uh, the, the uh, comrades, uh, they said, well, this is a tough girl, great. But whenever boys do this, if they beat others up, uh, they either get a reprimand or they are diagnosed with ADHS. So we don't need these nursery schools, those uh, kindergartens. Uh, these is, uh, this is a catastrophe. A few days ago, I uh, went along the street. It's a pedestrian zone, uh, so, uh, so you can, can't even drive at 30 kilometers per hour. Small uh, children trundled along. Five educators, female educators, were so excited. Uh, I didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. Overmothering. We have a complete overmothering in our society. So, moving on, all the textbooks, uh, we have a feminist children's literature. They are edited by when my book, uh, Fathering. It has enormous uh, sales. Uh, Fathering, Mr. Richter, a small. Uh, publisher in Hamburg. He did so much to make this book well. Mr. Leimbach, I agree. Yes, it's a good purpose. Uh, uh, well, whenever I talk about fathering, it's so close to my heart. Well, I do everything to bring it to the bookshops and the out. How often is my book fathering? Never. You will never find it on display. Mr. Leimbach, I have written to all the libraries. I have tried to get reviews in the educational journals. Nothing. They, they open the book, and why, why wouldn't they? Uh, do you think in the bookshops there is one single man working? No. 
bookshop, book selling is a female profession. Uh, children's literature, uh, I, I have created so much uh, waste paper because I stashed them away. The message is always the fathers are anti-heroes. They are idiots. Uh, they are cumbersome. They may be sweet. Uh, they may be laughing stocks. But the third time, you don't laugh at it because the mothers are strong. And the older girls, they are courageous, they are intelligent. And again and again, it is uh, depicted the father, where the families where the father is superfluous. It's the mother. The mother is the lioness. It's the primary caregiver. And all, all this is uh, uh, subliminally instilled. So the mother dominates quite often the father. Just like in real life, there are so many examples. Who uh, looked Wiki? Wiki and the strong man? Wiki. Yeah. You must be strong now. Peppa Woods, you see, for example. He is too idiotic. Uh, then he, he stumbles. Uh, the father is an idiot. Yeah, he's sweet. But after the tenth book, it's no longer sweet. It's no sweet father. It's uh, very difficult to get by books, uh, fathers uh, that are a role model. I, uh, I, please send me uh, such books. I would love to hear about them. By night, uh, the women will steal the, uh, all the money. They take the boat. Uh, the ship, Vicky, is making fun of them. And in the end, uh, the uh, the mothers buy the cow, and the fathers drink the milk too. Hey, oh, we love you so much. And you find uh, such books. That's the normal socialization today: conflict between father and mother, and the child uh, is totally dominated by the mother, sticks to the mother. It, it, I have uh, seen this in hundreds of times. I would even say thousands of times, a couple of thousand. They have learned from early childhood to understand mother, to uh, make a plea for mother, to, to defend mother against the father, not to become as evil as the bad father. This is a pl these are the plots uh, that are c common in today's children's literature. So we have uh, funded by the government, by the state, an enormous girls' promotion, ag aggression, and self-assertiveness of uh, girls is actively promoted. Uh, educational staff will support uh, the girls. Uh, uh, and even as boys are then trained so as to not perform any masculine behavioral patterns. We have an overprotection of the child. It's also a form of children's uh, child abuse. You cannot uh, deserve uh, certain qualities, risk management, aggression, fighting spirit, decisiveness, being committed to one uh, objective. There are so many aspects that you need in life. And uh, overprotection will prevent you from developing these uh, so important male characteristics. The two principles of education. This is not a gender theory, like I would say. Every child needs mama and papa because mama has a role. The mother provides uh, the comfort zone, relaxing, while father represents risk, adventure, potential of effort. Yes, I have this. The small child yesterday, the, uh, Kairos, uh, with his uh, wheel, he, he uh, fell and he hurt his knees. So what? My, we need to go home. We need to take care of this wound. Um, no. We will carry on. We are okay. Later on, children need both. They need a caregiver. They need a caregiver. Yeah, a scraping of the skin. But mother would call the whole thing off. The father said, "Hey, you need to uh, to tolerate this. You need to go through it. It's a totally different role, played by the father. Aspects that are communicated by the father. Which principle is dominating?" in our society, and I would claim that it, we have uh, 
the completely f feminine principle, a completely feminine environment, 98% uh, uh, indoor. The children do not pass any time outside. A ban on uh, aggression, a ban on uh, the children uh, must. Who went to school? Today it's uh, verboten, it's banned. And so many other things are banned, are prohibited. Children must no longer drive. Uh, who has ever had fights uh, in the schoolyard? Yes, I know. We have a completely feminized education, even in the primary schools. And I would say today's children's world is more and more made for girls, is optimized for girls, the learning activity, the textbooks in the schools, but also the behavioral patterns. And uh, we see the result, uh, leadership of girls or the uh, extra promotion for boys uh, have uh, much higher rates of uh, school drops, of alcoholic success, uh, drug addiction, criminali uh, criminality, suicides. Look at the statistics. The boys are the losers in our schooling system. So. How will a boy become a man? Habt ihr euch in der Kindheit verletzt? How often did you get hurt? How often did you have an injury when you were children? Once a year, once a month, once a week, or several times a week? How often were you injured when you were children? Okay, so, I mean, maybe um, the very young participants today, they grew up with a lot of care, but the, the older generation, those who grew up in the 60s and 70s and 80s, they were still allowed to do a lot of things that are now considered as too dangerous. For example, driving uh, on the back seat of the car without a uh, safety belt, or driving a bike without a helmet. Or if you hurt yourself, you know, for example, I sometimes um, went to the scrapyard and played there, and I hurt myself, and what happened? I was slapped because I wasn't supposed to be there. And one day when I went to the scrapyard, the, uh, there was a dog that bit me. And my father said, well, serves you right. <laughs> serves you right. Why did you go there? And of course, that didn't keep me from doing the same thing the next day. So we spent our time in the open air. We were outside. We had friends and freedom. And I would argue that blood, sweat, and tear turn you into a man. That's how we are socialized, blood, sweat, and tear. Some may call this provocative, but that's exactly what it takes in your childhood. If you only play with the PlayStation, if you only sing and dance and make drawings and paintings, you're not going to sweat, you're not going to cry, and you're not going to get hurt. How often did we get hurt? You know these little injuries. My, in a way, my, my full body is full of scars because I cut myself with a knife, I fell off a tree, I tried to light a fire and burnt myself. Of course, all of these things are part when you are a boy being together with friends and having these freedoms. And of course, what this needs is trust from the side of the parents. So we can really have these kinds of experiences as boys. And there have been very strict rules and strict consequences, of course. And that's how parents could give their children this liberty. And this would lead to the development of a young man who can take on responsibility for himself. And this is missing simply because fathering is missing. Now something positive. Um, fathering, when fathers play with their children. You know, I talked with a lot of men and I said, hey, what would you do differently? If you had the chance to start your life all over again, what would you do differently? And you wouldn't believe how many men would have said, I would, if I had the chance to start all over again, I would spend more time with my child. I've heard this a hundred times. I never heard any man say, well, I should have made a better investment or uh, become better in my hobby or spent more time with my hobby. They always say, I should have spent more time with my kids. Now they are grown up and the chance is gone. There are certain things that you can only do with them when they are young. The younger they are, the more important you are to them. When they are 15 or 16 years old, they are more independent. Of course, they still need a father, but the decisive experiences come earlier in life. So. When the father plays with children, he will develop patience, determination, um, perseverance, all the things that are listed here. And um, if the child is confronted with the more provocative things that the father does, the child will also learn 
to uh, deal with stress and failure and fear. And all of this will strengthen the self-esteem and self-confidence of the father, uh, of the child. That is only what the father can offer. And the father can also compensate for a problematic uh, relationship between the child and the mother. You know, many people come to me with their specific problems, but I do not only work with them, but I also do my research. I've done that for a long time. And what I found out is that typically the reasons lie in the childhood in a, a connection with the father. There were certain traits of character that little boys were not a able to develop because they were only in the care of their mothers and their female kindergarten uh, pe pedagogues. Um, so fathering is not the same as mothering. A few ideas here. You may say, well, this is so boring. When you have a little baby, you can't really do very much with him or her. But then add a hobby, fun, creativity, just a few funny ideas here. So, dear dads, that was my plea. Now, you don't have to become a coward in order to be a good father. You don't have to go like, wow, 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 like the mother. You can have your own style. That's one of my central messages. As a father, you should have your own style and offer your child some fathering. Do your hobbies and take a child along. You know, for example, in Brazil, I like to go kiting. In Brazil, there was a guy um, in a lagoon and with his five-year-old um, son between his legs, also on the, on, the, on the board, and, you know, he was turning somersaults, he was doing all kinds of things, and his little boy was standing behind his legs. But of course, you have to be good at that. You have to be 150%, 150% sure that you're good at that. But then you can take your child with that. You just um, develop your own style. Play with kids, do creative stuff, follow your intuition, and try to look for challenges and risks that help the child to grow. You know, then it will start jumping down here off the stage. The mom says, no, you're too little, don't do that. But you say, no, you can do that, no problem. Throw the child up in the air, even if it's only two months old, you know. You just have to be sure you're able to catch the child again, but then the child will love that. Whenever I took my son out of the cradle, I always grabbed him by the legs and <laughs> lifted him out of the cradle. His mother found that horrible, but <laughs> the little boy found that funny. You don't have to sing la 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 to the child. You can uh, sing like a shaman and play drums on his back, you know, like this. The child will love that and will even fall asleep like that. My oldest son falls asleep that way, much better when I do that than, with, than when uh, his mother sings a, a, a lullaby to him. So the father has to find his own style to enjoy raising the kids and fight the mother's chauvinism, because many women don't believe that men are able to develop a good relationship to the child when they do, no, do their own thing. Now, the bad thing is the mother has the power. If the mother doesn't want the father to develop a good relationship to the child, well, then you as the father have hardly any chance at all. That's the way it is. So you also have to take the woman on board. You have to convince her that it's OK to do dangerous stuff with the child uh, as well as long as it's not totally idiotic. But the idea is uh, the child is connected to the mother and you have to cut through this navel cord, you know, right after the birth. That's the father's right to cut through the navel cord that connects the baby to the mother. And as a father, you do that every day, in a daily life, in a daily life, no matter whether it's a boy or a girl, take the child on an adventure. The, the girl too will develop self-esteem and fun and joy and loving uh, her life. You know, um, many men find it difficult to do that because they just do what their wife tells them to do, to make little drawings, to paint pictures, to sing and to dance. But typically for the father, that is very boring. So what about some action, doing some crazy stuff with the kids? And then you just have to make sure that the residual risk is as low as possible. Now, unfortunately, we have a system that is turning more and more into GDR 2.0. GDR, that's the former East Germany. Um, so what happens here is just what happened in the old GDR. People are taken away from the parents very early. Um, in that moment, when kids go to the kindergarten, to the staff who work there and who will never have the same love for the child that the parents have, then parents and then the children won't have the same kind of or receive the same kind of mothering and fathering anymore. 
Um, this will be replaced by state control, so to speak. There are lots of studies on that, that kids below three years of age shouldn't go to kindergarten because the primary relationship has to be strengthened, first of all. And I have to say very clearly, the ability to start relationships and to fall in love depends on these primary relations. If the primary relationship between the child and the parents is very stable for the first few years, this will really um, characterize that person then for the rest of his life. I can see so many people in my office who come to me, to my seminars, who are not able to fall in love, to have a functioning relationship. They were often separated from their parents very early. Um, their parents left home and so on. So children who were separated from their parents at a very early age, they have these problems later on in life. And that's why it's important to make sure that you create this or you establish this close connection to the child at a very young age, and you have to maintain that connection. That's why I think it's not a good idea to send children to the kindergarten too early. And separation is always traumatic. I think about 50% of all marriages get divorced after seven years. And a, a, a divorce, a separation, is always a massive trauma for the child. It has an adverse impact on the child's self-esteem, trust, and ability to fall in love and have relationships. That's something I also talk about in the book, and there are lots of studies about that. Both Having both parents available, both parents there, that is one important factor that gives the child the belief in love as well. And apart from that, if the parents separate, this can even have physical cause some physical damage for the child. So children need both. They need a good relationship with their parents, but also a good relationship between the parents. Now, there is this theory that a patchwork is a good alternative, but that's not true. Yes, it is an alternative, and sometimes there's no other way to do it, but it's not a good alternative. You, need, you know, let's say there's the new father, the second man, and the woman can't live with him either and disposes of him again. Then comes man number four or man number five. Of course, the child can't handle that. I mean, even as, if a, as, as a therapist, when a woman tells you su such a story, and even as a therapist, you don't really know how many men she or how many pseudo fathers there have been now. Um, and with every separation, the child will um, experience a trauma. And the problem is that typically, when there's a divorce or separation, Think about the grandparents. Which of you loved their grandparents? You will love to stay with your grandparents, but the problem is when there's a divorce or separation, the woman has the power, and um, and she also makes sure that the child don't get to see the grandparents anymore. I mean, our grandparents didn't do a lot of stuff. We just went there, visited them. They didn't do anything cool. They were just there. They just sat there and were nice. But a baby needs its grandparents. And typically, when the woman and the... Uh, uh, and the man gets separated, and there's a real war of roses. If there's a real war over the separation, the divorce, then the woman is in power, and she tries to make sure that the father no longer gets to see the child and that his parents also don't get to see the child. And this means she's pulling out the roots, and they are missing then. And one more thing, if we have enough time, um, I can also talk a bit more about what happens when there's a separation and when there are problems. Now, the next topic. Finding each other, we wrote a book together. What happens? Why do people have more and more pro problems in relationships? Why is it so difficult to lead a permanent relationship? Because children need, from my point of view, at least uh, the adult mama and papa are there, uh, just like uh, the son is the father. These two relationships are crucial. The stable permanence and the presence of, uh, promotes uh, the capacity to love and to enter into a relationship. The origin of most relationship problems is a separation the absence of the father or a disorder in the relationship. So, children coming from separated couples, uh, they have less and less long-lasting relationships because they saw it in their parents uh, that a relationship is something arbitrary. It can be uh, cut. Uh, who has ever done a, a family positioning? Who does this? Yeah. You are all, all experts. So, so I'm not telling you anything new. The major, the central beliefs and creeds are repeated by the children. Is have a clear vision. What do you want to have? Uh, and most men select the wrong woman, and the relationship breaks. And this creates a lot of suffering. Well, not for you personal. You will cry a lot, uh, and you are then unhappy for a short time. But the next one is around the corner. No, it's about the children. It's about the children. 
And if I ask men, why have you got this bike? It's the brake. I had a test drive. Uh, he will tell you about this uh, sailing boat. Why have you married this uh, wife? Because we love each other. Sex was good. Well, it just ended up like this. So we grew together. Or it was my soul partner, not better. That's uh, nothing substantial. I claim, look with great care. It's the important decision in your life. Yes, of course, uh, the job is important. Yes, it's Im uh, do you have a tattoo or not? Uh, because it won't go away. Will I mm, uh, move to other countries? Will I have a serious investment? Will I buy a house? But all this can be repealed. But you will always stay a father for your children. And the woman, Eve, the, no matter whether you turn away from her, she will always be the mom of your It's a crucial decision. It's about taking a an aware uh, decision. Don't beget a child just like that. Select uh, the woman. Uh, select the um, wife. Well, just to have sex or to have an affair. Yes, everything is fine. That's not so decisive. With who are you going to set up family? For the children, it's uh, the. It's about avoiding so much suffering that stems from separation. And it's in your hands by taking the right, the right woman and take, making a good casting. What do you need for a successful fathering? Well, work on your fatherhood topics. If you say, my father is an asshole, I will do everything different. You cannot be a good father. It's, uh, you can rule it out if you ask, what about your, my father? Well, she, if she does, buy those sneakers and run away from her because you may uh, stay a night with her. But please do not set up a family with because what to, would be the grandparents of this? Uh, Lila agrees. Uh, look out for the right man. Look for somebody who uh, honors uh, his own father. He gets. 100, and 100 credit points uh, where they, because these will be uh, grandparents that represent them. You need to uh, cope or to clarify, to sort out your parental image, have a clear vision of relationships of your female partner. Father your children. Pl play the father role to your children from the very beginning in the other book, fathering. You can have an influence on the child even during pregnancy, how you can play a central role during the birth. My four boys were all born at home. These were well, cool. Well, cool is the wrong exp expression. Well, you can even have sex uh, before the birth, even anal message. Uh, well, uh, to put it bluntly, you cannot do it in the hospital. You can do it only at home. These are the most moving experiences in my life. The births of my children, the, uh, the first 20 minutes once they had gone, and I took them up in my arms. They are resting to the uh, men's, to my man's uh, breast. Uh, the muscle. Men's sweat is the first experience. Well, when. Uh, all uh, women touch uh, the boys. How often women wanted to touch my children. I uh, defend my children against all these women. Why do women this? From the very early childhood on, the children have too much physical contact with uh, women, too little contact with fathers, with men. E, men. Oh. They develop a homophobia. After the bath, uh, every, I, I practice a massage. Fathering means also physical contact, especially in the beginning after birth. Then you have the after birth. Uh, the first 20 minutes you are with your child. Uh, these are experiences that I will never forget in my lifetime. This is deeply moving. I wish you to have these experiences. Try to become uh, knowledgeable. Don't stand around like a stick and don't uh, topple over because you see uh, some blood smears. Study this. That's my message to you. Sp pass time with your children. Develop your own style. Never try to copy the mother. Develop your own style. Be self-assertive. 
most children are mama 2.0. They try to copycat them. That's not what your children need. They need a man, a man that grabs them with more physical force. There is even, <coughs> well, there are studies. Uh, the parents may also send a contradictory message. Well, uh, you must not be always on the same line. Uh, the children know when father is there, they can uh, uh, jump around. Uh, when mother takes care, they need to stay home. But with father, they can go out, even if it's raining. That's the message. Communicate the male pole to your children. Become an authority in education. Don't leave the decisions to your wife, because you would then lead a false imprint. Fight for your children. So discriminating against fathers in our society. Well, there are so many examples. Uh, Fathers are uh, discriminating. Do you know the Etika video, the bad thing, uh, uh, sexual abuse uh, by men? All of the other clips. But yes, it has become a common practice, discriminating against men and against uh, fathers. Uh, turn the roles upside down. Then we would uh, have uh, the civil war. Otto would not receive a single order. Edeka, Otto, these giants of the industry do this because it has become acceptable. It's always inside this uh, allowed corridor of, of provocation. This is a discrimination against men and primarily against fathers. It has become standard practice. Nobody takes issue with it. Uh, to, uh, <laughs> ah, decapitation videos could not be shown. Well, but in the end, well, uh, there will always be some uh, outcries, but uh, and finally it will increase our sales. Uh, so many have. Uh, written a petition against this Etika video. Men who open up their mouth, who, uh, that men are not uh, described as the idiots of our society. I do not. It's not about uh, this uh, organization here. It's about social discrimination against fathers in cases of separation. Again, for reasons of time, I do not want to read it out to you. All in all, we have seen in 90% of all cases, the right to care is given to the mothers. We have uh, this association, fathers fighting for their children. 